Life is a privilege. It is not a right. My husband and I do not come from under state, but we lived in under state for 33 years. And I remember driving the kids to school every morning. There was, and there is still, this mad woman on the way to their school. 33 years, she's still mad. Life is essentially a privilege. It is not a right. That you are alive is a privilege. Please, see life that way. Your breath, my breath, is in our nostrils. We are human beings, ordinary dust, that can give an appointment for 10 o'clock and quarter to 10 we are dead. So every day when you wake up, you owe God 26,800 thank yous. Because that is the minimum number of times that you breathe. You take a deep breath in and you breathe out 26,800 times minimum per day. You have no right to complain because there are people that have rented spaces in the mortuary. There are people that are mad on the streets. Recently, I think about two months ago, Mazan was sharing with me about this young man you will see him walk a quite a distance in the city of Akure where I live. And my husband said to me, darling, look at that young man. He's a medical doctor. His mother has five children. Two of them are mad. There is what we call aye. The Bible says, we see that overcome the world. Sometimes when I see people that are proud and haughty, I say to myself, you don't even know God. If you know God, you will not be proud. You will not treat people anyhow. Life is essentially a privilege. It is not a right. Number two, life is a loan. It is not a gift, per se. Life is a loan. One day, you will go and give an account. When you get a loan, you pay back. One day you are going to go back to your creator and give an account. Therefore, I want to encourage every one of us, tread softly. Tread softly. Life is alone. You're going to pay back someday. Number three, life is a huge trust given by God. God trusted us and gave us the privilege to be on earth. Briefly, I'd like to remind you that there are only five things that are most important in life. Five. You fail in these five areas, you are truly a failure, a colossal one. You succeed in these five areas, you are a true success. It doesn't matter what anybody feels about you. Five. There may be other things, but at 59, <laughs> I have looked at life and I've concluded that these five things are important. Number one is God. God did not create a world in which he will not be needed. Please, my sisters, my brothers, my fathers that are here today, make sure your relationship with God is personal and it is dynamic. You need to cultivate a relationship, a personal relationship with God. I'm not talking about religion. You are Muslim, you are Christian, you are Buddhist. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you having a personal access to God. You waking up in the morning and understanding God's counsel, God's purpose for your life. 
be a grateful person be thankful to god you may have lost something god is the reason you didn't lose everything still be thankful be thankful to god don't wake up in the morning and the first thing you try to get is your telephone you want to make a post on social media that is not what preserved you acknowledge god bow before god give him thanks magnify him let god matter to you so that you can matter in life Emma Jia Kony or Long Kerio, Emma Jia Long Fio, O Tobio, Tisha Beba, Bala Baba, Baba, Nikoko Noa. He is God all by Himself. Don't become so psychedelic that you cannot bow before God. Don't become so accomplished and achieved that God means nothing to you. You can talk to anybody, anyhow. You can talk to God anyhow. You can do anything all by yourself. You do not command the breath that is on your inside. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him by God. John chapter number 3 and verse 27. Let's acknowledge God in all our ways. Let's cultivate letting God be the first in everything that we do that we are god is the most important in life the second thing i'm telling you five things and then i'll drop the mic the second thing is you you are important do not allow anybody make you feel inferior about yourself excuse me i will not allow anybody make me define my life by my mistakes. I'm a human being. B-E-I-N-G. I'm not a human being. Participle. Past participle. B-E-E-N. You are important. You are still a work in progress. You did not fail. It is not a failure. It is a feedback. Show me a general that has stars. And I can tell you, he may be hiding it, he has scars. Who doesn't have a scar? Who has not made a mistake before? Who is perfect? When I make a mistake, it is a proof that I am trying. I prefer to start and make a mistake than not start at all. You are important. Stop collaborating with your prosecutor in the court of life people are doing bad both beating you talking against you you too you are talking against yourself you wake up in the morning you look at the man and say i don't even know what kind of head is this excuse me you are absolutely stunning you are beautiful you are handsome you are special you are important it doesn't matter what anybody says about you like yourself, love yourself, believe in yourself, and celebrate yourself. You know how many times you have clapped for people today? I want to give you just one second to please give yourself a standing ovation. Yourself. You have tried. You think it's easy to be a graduate? You think it's easy to be married? Clap for yourself, 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 yourself. Yes. Please sit down. Yes, we all came today to celebrate Dio, but once in a while, pause and celebrate yourself too. Invite yourself to a party. Put on a yes, put on Sonny, I did put on Obey. Excuse me, dance. Oh, look, okay, excuse me, dance. While you are climbing the stairs, pat yourself on the back. You think it's easy to raise children? You think it's easy to succeed? Oh, look, okay, it's not body celebrates you. Celebrate yourself. Like yourself, believe in yourself. Open, pour some champagne once in a while and drink toast to yourself. Ooh, one life. Mm. And it doesn't have to be your birthday. That be too long a time, once in a year. Celebrate yourself. Do you think it's easy to raise kids? Do you think it's easy to be married? 
I've been married 38 years. Sometimes I wake up and I'm asking myself, am I still married? With all that happened yesterday, with all the misunderstanding. Marriage is hard work. You've tried. Do you know how many files as a commissioner you have treated? Do you know the ladders you have climbed to get here? Do you know how many exams you wrote? Do you know some of you parents, you don't even give your children breathing space. You must pass. You must pass. Uncle but you to your face before now. I saw a cartoon one day, long time ago, daily times. This daddy said to the child, why are you always getting D and E? In 1942, everything was A, 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 A. One day the boy was sweeping and he sweat under the cupboard and brought these results. F9. This, you know, I know that. Who has not failed people? At Bawabu Rabe with Bashiri. Forgive yourself. Nobody makes it by using the rear mirror. Do you know that the first automobile that was manufactured had no reverse gear? As we speak now, all of you have been on, on airplanes before. The aircraft does not have a reverse gear because the manufacturer does not expect the aircraft to go backwards. If you see the aircraft going backward after you have bought it, it is momentary. It is just for some time. If you are laughing at the aircraft, you are laughing too soon. Because very soon, that seemingly helpless aircraft will be cruising at 37,000 feet above sea level. So if your life looks as if you are using the reverse gear now, it's a matter of time. Don't worry. I'm too convinced to be confused about the fact that you will soon be cruising at 37,000 feet above sea level. Forgive yourself. Is it because people wear makeup? Is it because people put up public display affection? Is it because people, when they step out, you would think they are just stepping out of Ovation magazine? Is it because people look like two, they are two plus two is equal to four? Let them tell you their stories. You will know your own is not the worst. When you go online and you go on social media and you see this picture, just imagine, let the camera just flip. You will see the other side of their room. It will shock you. Until you say, I am, nobody will say thou art. Once in a while, thank yourself. Help me ask your neighbor, when last did you celebrate yourself, sir? When last? Walk, 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 walk. Some of you cannot play Ludo, just Ludo like this on Sunday evening. You will even carry flags, come home. You will serve Lagos State Government. You will serve a local government. You will serve Oga. You will serve Suburb. And the office is going to be in your. Don't kill yourself. And I'm so sorry. We won't live in a nation that does not appreciate patriotism. You die, you die for nothing. A great man of God died about two years ago. If I mention his name, all of us in this world know, know him. Excuse me, sir. What is the regret you have? He said, when I was young, I used to think I could win the whole world. Now I'm old and the world is not won. I wish I had spent more time with my family. And that takes me to the next thing that is important. Family. Number one is God. Number two is you. Invest into yourself. Some of you can spend money on everybody except yourself. And you get to England and you go to ordinary next or Max and Spencer. You see a particular top that you like. The first thing you will do is go and check the price. Price. Is it price we are talking about here? And that money, if somebody calls you, oh, that money is there, you will transfer it. Spend it on yourself. Let me quote and unquote. Waste it on yourself. You deserve it. You're going to wake up. That's going to be extraordinary. You're going to wake up very soon and realize that you are 85. And you didn't leave. Some of you, you will take care of uncles, brothers, grandfathers, son. You won't take care of yourself. You cannot eat good food. You cannot drink. To so even buy a good car is a problem. That's why you came here today. To be challenged. You are important. Don't let anybody. Hey, I'm not a pastor. 
I'm a pastor's wife. So my title is not pastor. Years ago, about 30 something years ago, when the church first started, I would try to be like my husband. My husband is a pastor. He can listen to you for six hours. I can't. I will tell you what next. My husband will give you a kerchief to wipe your tears. He will continue to listen to you. I will try to be like him. At a point, I said to myself, no, I cannot be frustrating myself. I am not Felix Adejumu. I am Funka. I beg. I took my life, John. I'm a speaker. I speak. I don't need a book to speak. It's my gift. But I speak wisdom. And I make money with my speaking. Stop trying to be like anybody. One of you will be unnecessary. So I was a young pastor's wife. I was nursing children. You know, juggling things. It wasn't easy because my husband, I didn't marry him as a pastor. We were friends. Ministry came. So I didn't know even how to be a pastor's wife. Then one girl said one day, this one is not even beautiful. She doesn't fit our pastor. See our pastor handsome. Hey, that day the bad in me came out. I said, I won't reply you in yoga, but I was born in the bad I'm an Ibadan girl. Let me talk to you. I said, I'll hear me. I'm going to reply you in pigeon. I said, I may not be fine, oh, but I know the people where I find pass. Some of you, they will say anything to you. They will make you a rag. They will, all in the name of humility. There's a difference between humility and stupidity. There's a difference between humility and humility. There's a time to reply. That's why they can say anything to you. Because you don't even believe in yourself. You don't like yourself enough to so stand up. If you need to improve, go back. I went back for my first degree after four children. And I'm so proud to say that I left the class. Go back to school. If that is what is making you feel. Because I said to myself, the way this man that, that married me is going. He's now befriending governors, commissioners, members of the church were becoming very important. I said, I don't want a day to come when I will no longer fit the front of his car. So I began to improve on myself. And I'm still improving. I'm self Improving every day. Self-developing every day. Two years ago, I became a certified transformational coach. Eight thousands of dollars. Yes. I don't want to expire. I want to remain relevant to my world. Investing in yourself is important. The third one is family. If you don't want to be married, it's fine. But if you are married, please, I beg of you. As a man, take a good care of your wife. It is wrong for you to be sleeping around. It is wrong for you to be full of condemnation at home and commendation in the office. Hello, secretary, you look beautiful. And then you look at your and you share, going, whoa, 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 whoa. Excuse me. And you are not the general manager of the universe. When you get home, you are not director general or commissioner. You are somebody's husband and somebody's father or grandfather. Please come down from your high horse and let's feel you. If you are a priest and you cannot be touched, you are a low priest. Low. When you are coming as daddy and everybody say, come on, switch on the TV, switch on the TV. You are the lion of the tribe of that family. <laughs> and these children, one day, they are going to grow wings and fly away. If you want them to return, they will remember how you treated them when they were young. So daddy, I know you are a politician. I know we want you to be a leader. I know you are busy, but please remember that your children, you have only seasons in their lives, and seasons are seasonal. When you come home, you may not have quantity time. Spend quality time with your wife and your children. Every Sunday evening, my husband plays Ludo with me. 
I said to him recently, even if you cough in church, I'll be blessed. Because you live what you preach. I beg of you, your family life is important. Love your wife. Love your children. Invest into them. Defend them. Protect them. Provide for them. These are not the days of salaries only. No, nobody can be wealthy by salary except you, you, you cheat or you steal. So do something extra to bring more income in. But most importantly, be there for your children. Don't let your wife be the only one that will help with assignments. Don't let your wife be the only one that will do school runs. Daddy, the child you nurture today will nourish you in your old age. Be there. How can I forget my father? It's not only January 18 is his birthday too. He will have been 98 last week. Or 99. He will hold my hand and teach me. Olufunke, right. You see this line. You know, remember those 2D exercise books? My father will say to me, it is not for decoration. Those lines, oh yeah, bring your hand. He will, how can I ever forget? Those children will not forget. Psychologists have discovered that as a father, if you always hug your, your daughters, they will be emotionally stable. Nobody outside, no pastor, no allergy that is not called of God will be able to mess up with them. Because they are used to love, a father's love. Assurance. No man will tell them, you are beautiful. Because daddy tells them every time, my princess, you are beautiful. All our biological children are married by God's grace. And my, chief, my husband wrote letters to each and every one of them. I remember what he wrote for the last born. Today she has a set of twins. She has three boys. My husband said, Dear Oluwa told me, you were the one we all waited for before we moved into greatness. You know, things like that. And she keeps the letter. Daddy, write a letter to your daughter. Write a letter to your son. It's not only bam, bows, you beat every time. Wow, what is it? What? Let them know that they are loved. Sometimes my husband will carry them to the University of Ife. Make them sit on the grass and tell them his life story. When they were going to get married, he had sessions with each one. This is how to treat a man. This is how to treat a woman. This I couldn't even say. This I was too shy to say. He exposed them to this. Fathers! We are the fathers. Thank you. 21st century fathers must be involved in the raising of their children. Once in a while, tell your, your wife, don't worry, I'll drop the children off. I'll go visit them. It's not only, ah, the motor ticket to Dubai. These days, let me tell you, sir, so even women can buy tickets to Dubai. God is blessing women. So it's not anything, but it's not anything, really. And as a woman, if you are married, don't make your husband a toothpick. Don't disregard your husband. You can kneel down to greet your pastor and your imam in church. Hey, hey, bless her. God bless you, sir. And then your husband is nothing to you. And you're telling me that you're a good woman? Are you kidding me? And then when you're going to church or you're going to the mosque, you dress so well, everything is fine. When you get to, you come and be tired of power on your breast. You will, you will now hide the hair with one black net. When you want to go to bed, you will now wear one night wear that you inherited from your grandmother. <laughs> to even make matters worse, you are so used to tying scarf and hijab that when your husband is making love, so you say, hey, my hijab, oh, my scarf, my scarf, what? Religion. The man cannot enjoy you. The man cannot feel you. And you say you are married. Or you put one beret as a Christian. Beret in Isha. And the man is wondering what exactly is going on here. Let's bring romance to our marriages. Religion should not stop you from enjoying your marriage. Honor your husband. Celebrate him. He's your king. Let him know that he did not make a mistake by marrying you. If he's a priest, he's a religious person, don't disgrace him in the mosque or in the church. Let people respect him. Let them know that he's truly a leader at home and outside. That's how to be extraordinary. Don't be a saint outside and a devil 
insight. Family is important. Number four, as be done, your career or your job. Your career or your job. You are a lawyer, be the lawyer. You are a designer, be the designer. My husband says, what you are gifted for is superior to what you are trained for. There's a gift on your insight. You can study about chemistry in the university and you're a designer. I will buy Ankara 3,000 and give the designer. They will be charging me 7,000, 11,000. One day somebody said to me, Mommy, it's my brain you are praying for. I said, it's true. I cannot cook so it. Some of you are, are gifted. Millions are sitting on your inside. You want to be extraordinary. It's not only by praying. Pray, but work. As I stand before you today, I'm a preacher. Yes. Some of you know me as a preacher. But please, I am an erudite businesswoman. It is now almost fully to put money in the bank. I'm telling you. When they now print the statement, you will see um, um, interest. I trust you where interest 11 naira 49 cob. And they will still take VAT, they will still take something. Do something. Your career. Don't expire. As a woman, gone are the days when it's only with men that must work. There's nowhere in the Bible that says women should not work. Oh. Even if you're a full time housewife, sell pure water, do something online. So that you can even contribute to exercise books, just buy an exercise book. It's important. And the last one is relationship. Please, I humbly say this to you, all of you. Your net work will determine your net worth. So if you are a person that hardly greets people, you are always finding fault in people, people will offend you. Oh, you know what you are looking for? You are always looking for a mistake. You go to a church and see the choir. One is moving like this. One is like, you went to the mosque. Did you see the, the way the mom is speaking? Did you see? You are always finding fault. You will not have friends. And human beings are the greatest asset, even though they are the greatest liability. They are the greatest asset. Nurture relationships. Befriend people. Look for people that can help you. I have Muslim friends. So it's not about religion. There is a man that I have a relationship with. It's been like almost 20 years now. He, when it comes to carpentry, he is gifted. He's a Muslim. I give him the key to my bedroom. I trust him so much. He's a Muslim. I will even be calling him Abraham. Pastor Abraham. It's Ibrahim. He's so honest. So if you want to close your eyes and say, bad people should pass. Good people will pass and you will not know. So it's not about religion per se. It's about quality of character. Who is the person? Please, nurture relationship. Wise people always nurture profitable relationships. Some of you have collected numbers and contacts five years. This is 2022. You have not caught the person once. And that person is a door that can lead to many doors. This firewood is not good. You removed it. You threw it away. That one is not good. You removed Which one will cook your food? You're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Bear with people. Bear with their idiosyncrasies. Forgive in advance. Challenge them. I know there are some people you should walk away from. I'm not talking about people that abuse you psychologically. But I'm talking about people that are profitable to your life. Relationship. Please add the little I have shared with you today to what you already know. And let's run. This year, the Lord laid it on my heart. He said to me, be intentional about everything. I've shared a few wisdom gems with you. And I want to trust God that this year will be your best ever.
that you will go from grace to grace, from glory to glory. I frustrate anything that wants to frustrate you in the name of Jesus.